Trisha, let's get right to it. Should the staffing and recruiting industry be afraid of AI? Maybe a little. <laughs> Maybe a little. I think that the question on everybody's mind is, is AI going to replace us, right? Yeah. And I can say definitively, AI is not going to replace a recruiter. I know that for certain. Uh, but a recruiter using AI is going to replace you if you're not using it. So I think there is some inherent risk involved uh, if we're not jumping on this bandwagon pretty aggressively uh, right now. But it's almost the same as recruiters who educate themselves, who learn, who are consistently developing their skills are going to replace recruiters who are not, right? It's not almost like the tool is going to replace, but it's the individuals who do use it you're going to have a leg up on individuals who are not. Absolutely. I think the difference between, I mean, don't get me wrong, as a trainer and a coach, I want yeah. everybody focused on learning and development. Absolutely. But I think AI is a little bit different. Okay. When, when you're learning how to do something, you go to a class, you gather the information, you put it into practice. Uh, our experience has been typically... Uh, someone really focused is probably on a first go around in training going to retain about 25% of it. Okay. So okay. when you're going through training, you are absolutely bettering yourself as a person. You're bettering yourself as a recruiter. But AI is totally different from that. Instead of it being like training, it's like paying $20 a month for upgraded GPT and you have a 25 hour a week virtual assistant actually doing your work for you. I I could not agree more. And and I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. I saw you and Jason speak at NAPS a little while ago. Prior to that, I was using the free version of GPT. I bought it from my seat, the, the GPT-4, while I was sitting in your session. And I said, you know what? I spend $20 in a lot of worse places every month. This is going to help me. You know, that's that's Chipotle for lunch. $20 a month is the right decision. And I've seen drastic improvements in how it's helped me in terms of how I'm using GPT. Um, well, but, some, but you're speaking just, exactly right. You know, Go ahead, please. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm sorry. I was just going to say there's so much functionality that you get from the upgraded version of it um, that it, it for 20, it's the best $20 I spend every month. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and in, in thinking through, you know, you you had referenced about 25% of information is retained the first time you go through a course, I believe you said. Um, you know, there's some data that I've said in, in talks where the forgetting curve kicks in. And an hour after you hear something, 70% of that information is lost and forgotten. Typically, one week after you will have heard this podcast, you'll lose 90% of the information that we shared. With AI, as Trisha is saying, you now have this assistant at your disposal, whether you're on your computer, you're on your phone, whatever it might be, whenever you need them. And it is incredibly beneficial for recruiters. Incredibly so. Uh, one of the things that uh, I have found, just as a little hack that I've been doing a whole bunch of, if I grab my phone and I just open mm -hmm. chat PT in the app, um, I, I can just direct prompt with my voice. So um, I'm just holding up my my phone. And if I want to, I can say, give me 10 subject lines that would be effective for a third party agency recruiter to reach out to a product manager in manufacturing. Please make sure that all of them have uh, compelling subject lines, good wordplay, use puns that speak directly to the role of a product manager, but do not pitch the job in the subject line. Give me 10 of those. And that's it. And I'll tell you what they are in just a second. Um, but to be able to do it that quickly is like engineering success, a dialogue on product management innovation, right? But that's the first one. Now there's 10 of them. And I mean, I didn't even have to yeah. type anything. I just picked up my phone and now yeah. I can go into my desktop, open GPT, and all of those results are right there for me. 
unbelievable technology. I think I was trying to watch the clock and see how quick you did that in. And okay, so maybe it was 15, 20 seconds to speak. Yeah. And then immediate results back. Friends, if you were going to do that yourself, you're talking an hour of creative brainstorming, maybe, maybe. Now this opens you up to so many other tasks that you can complete, right? It's taking yeah. all of those tasks off of your plate and letting you do other things that you love, other things that you're really good at. How about like getting on the phone and talking to actual candidates and clients, right? Because yeah. what we see a lot of in recruiting and staffing, um, recruiters, uh, you want to get a recruiter to shut up, put a phone in front of them, right? I mean, like sure. recruiters, a lot of recruiters don't want to get on the phone. And so they get kind of bogged down in the tech. And I think that if we can leverage the tech to the best of our ability, as efficiently as possible, then we can get back on the phone, which is where we actually make placements. I would love to see that. I'll be honest with you. I know uh, in thinking through whether it's recruiting or, or driving leads, driving prospects to learn more about our services, the number one thing we can do is talk to people, right? We are in a people business. Friends, I don't know if I need to tell you that. I don't know if you need to come to this show to learn that, but we are in a people business and we're in a great business of putting great people to work and great opportunities. And therein lies communication, right? So if we can offload some of these lower level tasks to a virtual assistant, I don't even know if that's probably the right phrasing. You're, you're probably going to correct me on that one. But an AI assistant that we can use at our disposal, why would we not do that? So Trisha, I want to know outside of that example that you just gave us, how are you seeing right now recruiters use AI to improve their workflow or improve their day to day? I love that question. Um, one of the things that, like, I've been a recruiter for 30 years, and uh, I have screamed from the rooftops. Like, there's a lot of people that talk about candidate control, client control. Um, you, you don't control other human beings. Like, that isn't, it, it just isn't legitimate. I reject the premise. Uh, I don't believe that Anything anyone is going to say to a hiring manager is going to make them extend an offer to a candidate they don't want. And nothing you say to a candidate is going to make them take a job that they don't want. So if we start from that position, which is the position I've held for the vast majority of my professional career, that means that where what we do have control over is the activity on the front end, right? We can get enough first interviews, enough submittals, enough send outs, that the numbers all even out. But having that real influence, I mean, I don't know that we've really had that influence uh, other than maybe in our own heads for years. Now we have it. Now we have the ability to influence at a level that I have not seen in the three decades I've been doing this. So what we do now um, I will encourage all of your listeners, every single hiring manager, every single candidate, you want to just randomly, casually, in the midst of the conversation, say, have, have you ever taken a personality profile? What are you? Like, it, it doesn't matter what they say. They could tell you their DISC assessment, their Myers-Briggs, their Ocean, their 16 personalities, Enneagram. Heck, they could give you their astrological sign. It doesn't matter. Chat GPT knows all of it. So now what I have the ability to do is if I go to my hiring manager and I say, hey, John, have you ever taken a personality test? And he's like, yeah, I'm a high D secondary C on a DISC assessment. And then I've got my candidate and I'm like, Hey, Mr. Candidate, have you ever taken a personality profile? And he says, oh, yeah, I'm ENTJ on a Myers-Briggs. Now I have the ability to take the company summary, the job description, the candidate's resume, both the hiring manager and the candidate's personality types, drop all of that into a prompt, and GPT will write me a custom prep where looking at the job, looking at the company, looking at the personality of the hiring manager, what likely are the questions that this person is going to ask during the interview as it relates to the specific job? And then I can flip that and say, given this person's personality and their resume and their background, 
mm-hmm. staying authentic, not ever fabricating or, you know, if it was an AI hallucinating, um, how should this person, given their experience, answer these questions? So we're able to add a level of complexity to our ability to influence how well that interview happens. Uh, we, we've just never had that ability before. And I, I am finding it incredibly beneficial. <laughs> yeah. Friends, I'm going to encourage you actually right now to pause and rewind maybe about three and a half minutes and listen to that part again, because that was next level recruiting. That is just absolutely game changing. Thinking through prepping your candidate and doing everything you can to make sure that they put their best foot forward. Everything that Trisha just outlined for you is game changing. So again, pause. We'll wait. Rewind a little bit. Go back about three and a half minutes. I would encourage you to listen to that again because that was incredible. Um, you know, Trisha, I have found, and, and I don't know if maybe I got this tip from you at Naps or if I maybe came up with it on my own. At this point, it, it kind of all blends together when you when you learn about AI and what others are doing. I've been loving it on the prospecting side of things as well. And if I'm calling on somebody for the first time or I'm reaching out to maybe even a current client using information that I know about them from their website, their about us page, their contact page, their services page, wherever they are in asking GPT to give me questions that I should be asking them on an exploratory call to, to get me started, right? So that I don't have a blank sheet of, you know, oh gosh, what should I be asking on this call? It's helping me sort of prime the engine before we get going. And, and it's been so helpful when I'm talking to current clients and, and prospects in the industry. And I think it'd be huge for individuals, individuals listening who are saying, listen, I don't know what to say on a sales call. I don't know where to get started. Yeah, I would agree with you completely. I'm going to take that whole concept and go one step or maybe 10 steps further with it. Okay, That's what you're here for. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that is so common in our industry, recruiters don't want to talk to HR, right? And I'm going to tell you guys, talk to HR. They're at the grown-up table now, right? Like they have real influence. They're going to be involved in the process. Engage with them. Now, let's say you're in a situation where you're talking to HR and what you really, really want to do is talk to the hiring manager. We have a technique that we use chat GBT for, and we call it overwhelm HR. <laughs> That's the name of the technique. So we've written okay. prompts where uh, what we have uh, instructed the AI to do is progressively, gradually give me a series of uh, progressively more difficult questions specifically around this role, around the company, around the hiring manager, and make sure that after the first question, every question after that, there's a very strong likelihood that HR won't be able to answer. Okay, so it, it once okay. we put the job description in, now it's going to either get super technical or it's going to start asking questions about specific interpersonal dynamics on the team or how do they adopt and adjust to new technology. And it's not, they're not, obviously intended to overwhelm, but our experience has been that, you know, it doesn't usually take more than seven or eight of those before the person in HR says, you know, I think it would probably just be best if I put you in touch with the hiring manager. You're like, oh, wow, I'd be happy to talk to them. That's a great idea. You would do that for little old me? Great. I love it. But if I go into that HR manager and I'm like, hey, you know what? You're not going to be able to answer these questions. So why don't you just yep. put me in touch with the the decision maker? Now we don't have an ally. It has to be their idea. And so we're using chat GPT to um, overwhelm people in HR in order to encourage them to come up with the idea on their own to pass us to the hiring manager. Love, love that thinking. You know what? I'm going to do it again. Pause. Go back about three minutes and listen to that section again as well, because that is next level recruiting and next level AI as well. And, and Trisha, you're probably just getting started as well, I'm sure. And we'll talk about your your course and everything in a little bit here. I'll let you give a really good plug for that. I'm sure we're really just getting started. If you're thinking about the the modern recruiter, and maybe we call the modern recruiter where we're headed in 2024, maybe even 2025, I want to think about some some maybe small 
productivity hacks or ways that we can use AI to better ourselves as individuals. So we listed probably three or four really good ways, actionable ways to use this for recruiting, for prospecting. What could somebody listening saying, you know what, I've I've never touched this software before, but I hate email or I hate doing this. I hate doing that. What are some maybe entry level things that people might be able to do? I mean, when we're really talking entry level, it's so hard because I love sure. all the vamp stuff, right? So it's hard for me to back <laughs> down to entry level. Yeah, yeah. Um, entry level, I would be doing things like, here's the job description. Here's the resume. Um, what should my interview okay. questions be? Uh, here's the job description. Perfect. Here's the resume. How do I tell if they're qualified? Um, Perfect. But the, it's it's really hard because... But if yeah. you want to be exceptional, you can't do what everybody else is doing. Like we tell all of our students, don't use the inherent AI inside of LinkedIn to write your in-mails. Don't do that, right? Because every one of your competitors is doing that. And so all the messaging is going to sound the same. You've got to be able yep. to do it on your own then bring that messaging into the platform and then you don't sound like everybody else. So I don't know if I gave you a great answer there. Um, well, it's probably important for everybody to understand. Uh, I made a shift about maybe eight months ago. I took a post-it note, put it on the bottom of my monitor and it said, how can GPT support me in this? Right? Because literally GPT can support you whether you yeah. want it to write for you or you want it to give you ideas, whether you want to proofread or you want to translate. If, if you want to come up with jokes or quotes or stats or like it, it, it literally can support yeah. you in, in anything that you're doing personally or professionally. I, I'll say, and, and I'll throw this out there. It can help you so much. So as I have these seven items in my fridge, what meal can I make tonight? And it can give you that recipe, right? And and now, yes, we're talking recruiting here, but how can GPT su support me? Was that is that the verbiage? Yeah. What what can GPT do to support me in this? And then it's like task or initiative or. Yeah. But I I got into the habit where when I was shifting from one thing to the other, whatever it was, um, mm -hmm. I would ask myself that question and and you know. Love that the quality of the answer is based on the quality of a question. And if we can ask ourselves the right question over and over, we can actually optimize our own efficiency. I love that. I, I want to go back to something you mentioned about pasting in resumes to help it give you sort of prompts and, and not, not prompts because that's GPT lingo, but to give you questions that you might ask an applicant. I want to talk about not the scary side of GPT, but I want to talk about the personal data side of GPT. Should we be uploading people's names in, hey, I'm going to copy and paste this resume and drop it in. There's got to be some sort of safety precautions here. What should we not be doing? Should not, What shouldn't we do <laughs> in terms of pasting in somebody's resume into GPT? Well, I think you need to just be very conscious that we're dealing with some sensitive information. So uh, if I'm going to go into GPT and I'm going to put somebody's resume in, I'm not going to put their name and their address and their email address and their phone number. I'm going to copy the body of the resume. Now, candidly, I, I don't delete the employers because I haven't associated it to any name, right? So mm -hmm. I leave the entirety of the resume. I just leave off the contact information, right? Because Perfect. oftentimes... And you can go in and give, you can give the resume, you leave the name off, you give the notes, your notes from the interview, which probably includes, you know, how much money they make. Like we can't, we can't associate that to the person's name inside of an AI. Right. So we have to, we, right. it's almost like when you're putting information into the AI, think of it as if you were MPCing a candidate. If you wouldn't give the information on an MPC to a client that you didn't have a signed contract with, don't give it to the AI. 
Love that tip. Love that tip. You made another comment about how if you want to be exceptional, you can't do what everyone else is doing. And first off, I think you gave us the soundbite for the episode with that one sentence. And in two, our industry loves to be just like everybody else. And I don't know if it's intentional. I don't know if it's just a, a fallback, if it's whatever it is, but we struggle with differentiation and we struggle with being unique and in standing out. And whether it's in the sales process, it's in the recruiting process, we all sort of do the same thing. And as a result of that, we have a really lousy way of showcasing what it is we do. And I love the thought of if you want to be exceptional, you can't do what everyone else is doing in the sense of, you know, I asked for how do you do this on a basic level? How do you just get started? And he said, listen, here's what you could do, but you really shouldn't because that's what everyone else is doing. And friends, that's where we need to be thinking. We need to be thinking about how can we differentiate ourselves in 2024? How can we be unique? How can we have the courage to be unique? And then ultimately, how can ChatGPT support me in this adventure and in this quest? Right. Like I've, I've seen some people do uh, fairly advanced work building out full electronic cadences, right? So I tell chat GBT, here's my market, here's the role I'm recruiting for, or if it's business development, here's my value proposition. And then I have GPT write me a 15 or 20 point sequence, right? And then I drop that into some type of automation platform, hit the, hit my whole database with it and it drips out. That's what everybody's doing. At least the more, more advanced users of GPT. I'll make the argument that if you really want to leverage it and do something different, instead of trying to have it build you out a cadence based on the avatar that you're going after, why don't we have it build out a cadence based on the individual you're going after? Love that. So instead, what we do is we go grab their LinkedIn profile, right? Because you probably don't have a resume or if it's BD, yep. grab the LinkedIn profile Forever, all your listeners, you have to click see more, see more, see more, see, expand out the LinkedIn profile, copy yep. it, paste it as plain text, and then go to their Facebook page and copy everything under all of their likes, the TV shows that they watch, the movies that they like, the books that they read, put all of that in. Now, why don't you build out a 10-point cadence? only for that one person that only speaks to the things that are important to them. And now, I mean, I can run all of that through a virtual assistant. As long as I design the process, I pick the people and I write the prompt. If I do those three things, now I can just pass the whole thing off and somebody else can run that for me. And my highly valuable time can be spent on the phone making placements. I, I, you're blowing my mind over here. I love everything you're saying, you know, in, in, in thinking through again, business development, one, I think we're calling on the wrong people nine times out of 10, or maybe 99 times out of a hundred. We don't necessarily know who we should be calling on. So we don't know the right conversations, but when we do, and we know, listen, I need to talk to Brad. That is the person I need to be calling doing exactly what you're saying and saying, listen, here's the campaign that we're going to build out. Here's the touch points, everything that we're going to do. But it's not built around just a director of marketing. It's built around Brad specifically. How else are you going to differentiate yourselves but doing that? I mean, that's that's perfect. And and friends, you have seen in whether or not you've known it's automated or it's AI or it's it's helped. It, it's it has some sort of assistant tied to it. You've seen emails that come through where you say, "Listen, I don't know why they're reaching out to me about this, but that's that has nothing to do with me." Um, you know, I had one the other day, somebody reached out and said, Hey, go jets because I'm in New York. I live 10 minutes from the Buffalo bills stadium. I love the Buffalo bills. I have the bills logo on my back for you to reach out and say, go jets. I know that you do not know who I am very, very clearly. So friends, like what Trisha is saying by going to Facebook, using all of the resources that are at your disposal, disposal, and just being more strategic with it. Could not agree more. I want to ask, you've, you've given us a ton. And if I can, I want to ask for one more. If there is one more sort of prompt or thing that a recruiter could use AI for, what do you think it is? 
Well, I could go in a number of different directions there. Like, I think every uh, recruiting firm should have a prompt that they use that writes their candidate presentation for them, right? So you have to first train the AI on what information you want in a candidate presentation and what format you put it in. Um, But, I mean, we spend so much time writing up our candidates. That is just a, a massive amount of efficiency, Spend an hour, get it tight, make sure the prompt is good and it works the way you want it to do. And and then I would do candidate presentations for sure. That's one of the best, best efficiencies that we've seen. I love that. And and I will say again, I've said it a couple of times this episode, I personally am using AI to alleviate tasks that I don't want to do, that I don't feel are worth my time, that free up time for me to do more of this, to talk to our clients more, to consult more. That's what I want to be doing. One, it's what I'm good at. And two, it's, it's what I genuinely enjoy when I wake up in the morning. When I wake up in the morning and I see I have five or six calls with clients, I get fired up. And I know some people are probably listening to that saying, well, that is disgusting. I would never want to do that. But for me, I love it. So I don't want to have to do any of the miscellaneous tasks in between that. And that's where I find time to get those off of my plate. This is another one of those examples where you can free up more time to do more of the things you love. Yeah. So one of the things that like you saw me earlier, just take out my phone and voice directly into GPT. Yeah. That's how we should be capturing our, our notes from a candidate interview. So you do the interview and then... You have your paper in front of you, you pull out your phone, you hit the button and just talk for like five minutes about what the interview was, what you liked, what you didn't like. Then at the end of it, say, please clean up my grammar and punctuation. And now there's your your notes, copy and paste into your ATS. You, You don't need to write all those notes down. You just need to talk for a couple of minutes. And then have GPT right. clean it for you and you can paste it right into your applicant tracking system. That's a, it's a beautiful example. I'll tell you, coming out of the NAPS conference where we saw each other most recently, um, every conference I went to this year, I, I do my, my best to take notes so that I can share them with the team. Uh-huh. On the flight back, I dump all of those into GPT and I say, type this up into an email that I can send to the team and make it, you know, candid, conversational. You know, I don't want it. It shouldn't be buttoned up. It shouldn't be too stuffy because that's not who I am. I will tell you, and if anybody from Team Haley is listening, I have never really edited that email. It's been that good. Um, but it works really, really well. And you can take six pages of notes, knock it down into a you know three or four bulleted list of whatever it might be, and you're on your way. So I could not agree more. Trisha, I know you have put together an incredible resource for the industry as it relates to prompts and what you call fast formulas and prompts in GPT. I want to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit more about that. Um, thank you. What I will say is, uh, uh, I think that we don't just have the best AI program in recruiting. We have the best AI program, period. There isn't one out there that is better than what we're teaching. When ChatGPT came out a year ago, I was pretty excited about it. And before they started locking down parts of the data, I had an 18 hour conversation with the AI where I had it teach me how all of its internal settings work, how to prompt right, how to talk to it right. I mean, I, I learned how to do it from chat GPT and then, then a whole bunch right. of trial and error. Um, but yeah. then in February of this year, we hired a full time prompt engineer, um, most expensive person I've ever hired. All he does is write and test prompts. That's it. Full time. That's his full time job for us. So in our AI for recruiters program, we have somewhere in between 30 and 45 specific formula for recruiting use cases. So if I want to take a job description and drop it in and it writes me the entire ad post to the job posting for me, Um, Mm -hmm. If I want to put my information in, it writes the candidate presentation. But the beautiful thing about it is we've been, I've been a recruiter for 30 years. Like all of our best practices, we bake into those formula. So it is not just write me, consolidate this information in a candidate presentation. It says, 
if they don't fit anything, tell me what in their background is close and why the fact that they don't fit shouldn't be a concern for this. Like, so we build in a lot of logic. So we've got uh, 30, 40 different recruiting specific prompts that uh, we have generated and we continue to generate. Then we have another maybe 20 what we call smart spotlights. So that's when one of our students in class will say, hey, can you make it do this? <laughs> and we make it do that. Yep. And then we capture that and put it in the academy. Uh, and yep. then there's all the other things that you need that are not recruiting related. So social yep. media, email, website, videos, write a book, host a podcast, all your internal HR, your internal operations. And I think we have another, I don't know, 150 of those formula that we've developed. Um, but what's really fun about the program, we're on version three already of the program because this wow. tech changes so fast yeah. where we've had to go back and redo all of them. Good thing we have a prompt engineer, right? Um, but we're sure, on our, sure. our third version of it right now. And what we do is we give everybody the ability to basically quick launch with either 30 minutes or two hours in a video. Then you can go wherever you want in the academy to whatever you're most interested in. But we meet with them twice a month live for one to two hours where we bring everybody up to date on the changes of the last two weeks sometimes teach new prompts depending on what's happened mm -hmm. uh, or and then open the floor up for um spotlights for anybody that needs help with anything so yeah it, it's a great program <laughs> and and if somebody's listening saying you know what that sounds phenomenal where can they go to learn more uh, moreessentials.com m-o-o-r-e-e-s-s-e-n-t-i-a-l-s -E 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 um and then you go to training and the top option is ai Perfect. And we will make sure we link to that, whether it's in the description or the show notes, wherever you're listening to this, we will put a direct link to that so that you can have a quick access to that training, which sounds absolutely incredible. Trisha, before I let you go, I got to send you through our three question rapid fire round that we ask everybody on take the stage. You ready for it? Question one, one book that has fundamentally changed your life. The author is Keith Cunningham, and the name of okay. the book is uh, The Road Less Stupid. Ooh. The Road Less Very Stupid. Very good. Okay. Um, Keith Cunningham. Okay. That, that would, first one that comes to mind, it's not a book you sit down and read. It's a book that you work through over years, and it's Love fabulous. that. Love that. One conversation <laughs> with anybody Living or dead, who's it going to be? Well, it would probably be somebody dead because if they're alive, I can figure out how to talk to them. <laughs> That's the I would right. definitely Especially be with your, The way that you can research and figure it out. <laughs> right. right. I mean, I'll write a custom cadence and do it for years. <laughs> talk to me. Um, so, exactly. so I definitely go dead. Um, well, I probably my dad. If I could talk to anybody in the world, yep. I would talk to my father. It's a good answer good answer and one piece of <laughs> advice for someone just starting in the staffing or recruiting industry what would you tell them you're gonna make a ton of mistakes you're gonna make when you first get started you're not gonna understand a lot of the nuances you're not you're gonna feel insecure like you don't know what to say to a person whether it's a client mm -hmm. or a candidate and any time that you don't know what to say, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Just Love tell that. them the truth. Don't try to sugarcoat. Don't try to manipulate. Don't try to come up with the exact right response. Tell them the truth. Um, and then don't beat yourself up for the mistakes. That's how you learn and get better. Love that answer. She's Trisha Tampkin from More Essentials. Trisha, can't thank you enough for coming on this episode of Take the Stage. Hopefully we'll run into you at a conference sometime soon. Friends, 
ton, ton of great takeaways in this episode. If you want to learn more, you can connect with Trisha on LinkedIn, or we will put the link to more essentials in either the show notes or the description. But again, I can't thank you for coming on the show enough and sharing your insight with us. Thank you so much for having me. I love you guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>